do this before we actually try to do the PXE boot. Anyway, so going back to our server now, as you can see, uh, everything is finished, the operation is finished, and we are just ready to um, try out this PXE boot thing. And as you can see, if in my network adapters, I set it to um, internal because I do not want it to interfere with the other system, my um, my network itself. So now let's just show this, this in action. So I'm gonna use, I'm just gonna create a new virtual machine. So I'm just gonna click next, Win seven test box. I'm gonna call it that. Next, 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 next. So, and create summary as yes, we're going to create it so now what we want to do is we want to go on settings and then we want to enable the network to boot and we want to put it um, boot first if you actually go on network we want to set this to internal by the way again i said earlier you need to install the extension pack in order to allow these intel adapters to support pxe boot Okay, so I'm just everything is is intact, I guess. Let me just double check. Okay, so now we're just gonna press start, and now we can just cancel this first run wizard because um, we are gonna use PXE boot, so there's no need to actually link an ISO file to this thing. So as you can see, I'm gonna press F12, and you'll see this thing in action. Okay, you're seeing it here. And okay, um, this is our next thing you guys should note. If you are actually deploying this in a real world system, at this point of the um booting up process, it is gonna look for the drivers for your network um interface card. If it cannot find it, it's gonna give you an error and you cannot proceed in to install um Windows 7. I'm just gonna tell you that earlier. Right now you won't see this is because um as you can see here earlier the the extension pack that we install probably um install the have the um appropriate drivers for it already so that's something to note and I'm gonna show you guys what you can do in case that you actually don't have the drivers built in with this boot.wim file. So if we click on next they are gonna ask us to um, log in as someone with a privileges in the domain. So we're gonna just press test lab that's that administrator. I'm gonna put in the password. As this is the install.wim file, as you saw earlier, it actually lets us choose whichever OS we want. Let's say we want home. Let's install the starter edition. And we can click on next, and you know we can partition the drive and etc. And it will actually want to proceed to install. But um, I want to cancel this for now because I want to show you guys some more stuff. One thing you will realize is that um. For the PXE boot, one thing you need to do is press F12 and if you do not press F12 within a certain time, it will actually cancel. So the first thing you might think is, well, um, if I'm doing this in my environment, in a real world environment, and I have a lot of computers to deploy, I probably do not want to um, press F12 for each one of them. So what you can do is actually right click on your um, WDS server and go on properties. If you actually go on boot, you can only just say allow always continue PXE boot. So it's not the what the system does is it will not ask you to press F12 to continue. And I'm just gonna click apply and show you guys. Okay, so going back to system, we're gonna start this again. You see, as you can see, it automatically started by itself. Okay, so we come back to this window now. I'm not gonna install this Windows just yet, so I'm just gonna close this over again. And as you can see, there are lots of settings here that you can actually watch, such as the enable on attendant installation, which I'll talk about a little bit later. Advanced, um, I guess there's not really much things you can look at here. The PXE spot. Oh, we can actually look at this. What this does is if you actually um, check this box, what it's gonna do is every time someone tries to access the WDS server, is going to appear in these pending devices and you need to manual approve them and what you can also do is make a, a computer account for them before you um, actually approve them so i'm going to show you guys this quickly okay so going back to our virtual box we're just going to start this our machine again and as you can see they say they are um, 
pending request ID one. This contact then seven one nine two dot one six eight dot one dot one. So if we actually um go back here and we go pending devices, we will see that that's our device has showed up. And this was actually the GUID I was telling you guys about. The, each computer you should have a unique GUID. So if you only allow the let me just go back here and prop it right here. So if you actually choose respond only to known client computers, what you actually need to do is you need to find the GUID for all the computers that you want to deploy Windows 7 to and make a computer account for each one of them. And when I say computer account, I mean you actually go um Active Directory also domain services, users and computers and computers basically here. So now going back to our um, pending devices, let's say I can do two things. I can just either approve it and installation continue or I can name and approve it. All right, I'm going to show you guys the name and approve. Oh, and of course, you can reject it also. So if I click on name approve, I can actually make a name for this computer. And let's say if I name it, well, something that custard uses like zero one, etc. But okay. The pending device is successfully, was approved successfully, okay. And if you actually go back to the computer, you actually and press F5 to refresh the page, you actually see that um, a computer account has been created for that machine with the GUID. And also you should note that um, when, the, when the Windows is actually installed, the computer name will be MKC1101 or whatever you set the name to. So if you go back here, as you see, installation um, can proceed to um, install. Another thing I should also bring up is that if you're going boot images and let's say you have more than one boot image, right after the PX boot, the first thing you are going to see is which um, boot image you want to use. So if you have like more than one boot image, right after the PXC boots goes through, you'll see the um, all the different boot images you have and you need to actually choose one before you um, could proceed. So now we are finally going to actually install it. Just gonna click next, and uh, let's just install the start edition. Click on next, next. And we know it's gonna proceed to install. Now I'm gonna pause this video until the installation has finished. Um, okay, so the um, setup will actually completed the initial stages of installation. So it um, sends a signal to reboot the machine. So what I did was I actually closed it off because um, if you go to settings, you realize it will um, continue booting from the network. Now I changed this before I actually start back recording. So before I before I change anything, it was like this. So if I actually if it actually started, it will start again boot from the network, and we don't want that. So we all you want to do is we want to set start set it to boot from the hard disk. Now in a real world machine, what you might want to do is basically um actually go in the BIOS and actually change the boot order to maybe the hard disk or whatever, whatever. Also, the next thing is if you um install a 64-bit operating system, you also want to enable this feature, which is the IOAPC IC. Now this is only applicable to um our virtual machine here. In the real world, you probably won't have to click on enable IOAPIC, right? So just click on OK and we're just going to start it. And this time instead of booting from the network, it is going to boot from the hard disk. And we're just going to start normally because um, we interrupted it while it tried to reboot. So as you can see here, setup is just finalizing the installation process. And again, I'm going to pause this video until it actually finishes. Okay, so um, installation is finished, and as you can see here, this is the OBE or the out of the box experience. I just click on next, next, next. Accept the license agreements. Next, you recommend it settings. Next, and Windows is finally finalizing your settings. Okay, so I'm just gonna log in. Okay, so if you actually go and start and I click my computer and run properties, Let's change settings here. And click on change. 
So the first thing you'll notice is that um, it automatically join this machine to the domain. If you look at this, the computer name is the same one as the one that as the computer name that we pre-created, as shown here. Now, of course, you're gonna notice um, if you go on properties, you're gonna notice there's always a setting to do not join the client to the domain after an installation. You can also do that if you want. But of course, I mean, if you're deploying Windows Seven in a organization you are more or less likely to want to join the some um, client to the domain after installation right one thing you may realize after all this as well this isn't really automated because from what i'm seeing here i will probably need to go to every one of these machines and i'm probably gonna have to insert all these settings as the setup goes and well there's a solution to that and that is basically using our microsoft deployment tools um, one of them is um, Windows Automated Installation Kit, which is short for um, WAIK. And you can use these tools to set up the unintended installation files, which you can then link here. When a machine actually tries to um, install the OS, it will actually um, look up for this answer file and it's going to automatically fill in everything for us. So we do, need not, we do not need to log in as the administrator. We do not need to create um, a new partition we it will automatically do all this for us and of course you can also insert such things as product key and stuff like that but i'm not going to show you guys how to do it in this video i might do show you guys how to do it in another video okay so one thing you should realize is that i showed you guys how to do it with one machine but you it does not necessarily have to be one machine you could probably have like let's say eight machines running at the same time and it's all of them will install concurrently that's the beauty of windows deployment services and of course if you combine this with an unintended setup file you probably will truly have a um, automated solution for deploying windows 7. so now going back to our presentation here if you actually think about it in the real world what you basically want to do is you want to install a server with all these rows that um, i showed you guys earlier connect it to a switch and then let's say you, you want to um, connect any amount of computers to the switch and you can just power on all these machines and depending on the machine you have you may need to actually go into the BIOS and configure the um, boot, the PXE boot or the network boot whichever one you want to call it but of course I would assume that um, if you're actually going to buy these machine you could probably plan ahead and probably choose the machine that is capable of booting to the network without actually in any interference from um, a user so you don't actually need to manually go to the BIOS and stuff like that and another thing you should note is you should make sure that there aren't other DHCP servers that might interfere with the server here because if there are other DHCP servers what you find that might be happening is that um, these clients will actually get an IP from the DHCP server instead of the one which is installed on your Windows Server 2008R2 so that's the last thing you should take into consideration when you're actually deploying um, Windows 7 into your organization. Well, I guess this is it. Thank you everyone for watching. I do hope you guys find it to be informative.